So I'm going to show an example of creating an intelligent 3D electrical component from a step file. So this is C Electrical 3D Panel Plus. If I click on About, we can see this is version 1.6.1 .1 build 12. So to import a step file, I've got a, an image or a, a model already in here. On the top left icon, we can click and there's an option there for import and we can see there's an option to import AutoGAD 3D STL IGIS or step format files. So we could go straight to step and import the file from there. Equally, we could go to Windows Explorer and drag and drop a step file. So I've got one already downloaded for a power supply and I can drag and drop that. And it just shows it importing into the area. And there we can see the actual power supply that I've downloaded. So if I zoom in, I can look around it and I can see it's DIN rail mounted. I can see the rail mounts at the bottom. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is get it into the right orientation. So I'll go back to a front view, zoom down to my origin where it's imported it to. And if I want that to be at the base, I can double click to hold, hold up my mouse. And I can then use the X, Y, and Z keys on the keyboard to rotate it about each axis. So I'm going to rotate it about the X axis. So now it's facing downwards and that's in the right orientation. So I'm just going to click to place that down. So we've got a 3D object in the drawing. What we can try and do now is to right click and under assembly, we have the option there of creating a block, create a component, group, explode, or add to block. And I'm going to choose create component. Now, so if this has been blocked in multiple levels, we may find we have to explode it first. So what we can do is right click and go to assembly and choose explode. We can try again create component and again it's a block within a block so we need to explode it one more time maybe explode this time it took a little bit longer try again assembly create component now we get a selection of different types of electrical component we could save it as I'm just going to choose a basic component electrical click on OK it's going to ask me for a reference point where I want to hold it so I'm just going to say I want to hold it in this bottom corner here this is now an intelligent symbol. If I click on the properties panel, I can see it's a component. We could say the default naming for this could be PSU. And in this project, it might be called PSU1, for instance. And we can assign a functional location equipment. But this is now uh, ready to be made intelligent. The next thing we need to do is say how we're going to mount it onto a rail. So. Each component that we have, if I select it, when I right click, has block planes. So I can see that at the moment, this has one at the bottom, and I'll see this show active. It has a basic mounting plane, which is at the bottom of it. Now that's a fine if we just mount it onto um, a back plate, but if we want to mount it onto a DIN rail, we need to add an additional mounting plane. So before we go any further, the mounting plane must match an existing one. So what I'm going to do is go into cabinet, place down a piece of DIN rail, and just have a check. If I right click and choose block planes, I can see this has a mounting plane and also one for the rail. And I can see that that one is right at the top of that piece of rail. And notice that the X, Y, and Z are pointing in this direction. So what we need is a matching block plane on this component pointing in the same direction so they line up. So what I can do, rotate this component here. Select it, right click and choose block planes. And I'm now going to define a new block plane. So I'll go to define. Now the end point this time rather than in this corner is going to be on the right. So I'm going to choose this has been the center point. This has been the X. And I'm then going to go up to the top and say that this is the Y. And if I choose a list of names, I could give it my own name, but here I just want to call it rail. So that now is a mounting plane called rail. And I can see as I rotate that, that the Z plane is going outwards towards me. And that should now match the actual uh, DIN rail. So I can just close that down. I go back to a front view. 
double click on this if I move it somewhere near the, the rail I can see it jumps back and if I just rotate round I can see that's holding it nicely in position so it's got a nice block plane on there now if I explode this symbol all of the block planes disappear so I don't really want to explode the symbol if I can help it I'm now going to add some intelligent connection points where the wires are going to connect to so for this we're going to go into assembly go across to the connection section and go to add predefined connection we've got a list of different directions for the actual connections I'm going to go down to top click on OK and I've got an arrow there pointing outwards now in fact I'm going to do the ones at the bottom first and it's pointing in the wrong direction so I'm going to choose Z to rotate about the Z axis now I want this to snap at the center point just here between these two corners so I'm going to choose on the snaps mid between two points and we choose the top and the bottom points and I can see my connection point has appeared there I'm going to repeat that for the next one and once more for the next one if I cancel that I'll just do that for now I can see I've got three connection points slightly different positions but I'm going to window around those just select those connection points on their own right click and there's an option here if I just right click a bit further up under assembly there's an option to add to a block so these are not part of the symbol yet so I choose right click under assembly add to block and click on the block now when I look at the properties I can see this has three connections the first one I select I could put some text in there and say that that's live the next one I can say that's the neutral and the next one down I can say is a protective earth so we've now brought a step file in we've exploded it until we can create it as a component we've assigned a default number prefix we've assigned mounting blocks and rail blocks and now what we can do is save that into our catalog so in the list of symbols if you haven't already created your own catalog you can right click in some space create a symbol database type the name in you can right click on that add a folder and then select the symbol right click on the folder and create a symbol so now if we wanted to use that in the project obviously we really want to associate a piece of equipment a part number with that but if I click on the object it appears on my cursor and I can then place it and I can see that snapped onto that DIN rail if I had the wiring that would wire directly from there and connect everything together